Hello everyone, and in this course we're going to be learning how to build blazing fast websites using Vue.js with Gridsome. And Gridsome is a framework built on Vue.js that builds static websites that are extremely fast compared to other websites built using different frameworks that aren't statically generated. So how Gridsome works is it builds all of your website using data that you can load in using databases, Markdown, or any other content. So you can see the website that we're going to be building right here. So we have a home, an about, and a blog. So inside of this blog we have all of these different blog posts that are built using Markdown. So you can see inside of here we have a post folder and we have all of our Markdown within here. So we have a title, an author, a date, and all of this information, and we just have our blog post within here. And then it's loaded into our website. We also have comments integrated into our website for free with each of our blog posts. So it'll automatically save all of our comments. So you can see right here, we have a comment right here. So also you're able to programmatically create pages using Grissom that is very simple. So we have imported a JSON file into our project and we're just creating pages using each of these products inside of this array. And then we're just gonna go to this site by just going to product slash and then going to that route this ID. And I put in the wrong ID. So if we go to that ID then you can see that we have our website and it says one page website with three sections which is right here and the price is $39.99 so you can load in all of this data from your database or from anywhere across the internet onto your website so then it will be statically generated and it will be able to be seen by the search bots so what are you waiting for? build static sites now Hello everyone, and in this lecture I'll be showing you how to install the Gridsome CLI, so then we're going to be able to create our Gridsome project. So how you do that is, I'm on the Gridsome documentation right here, and you just have to put in this command right here if you want to install it using npm, which is shipped with Node.js, or you can use yarn. So to use npm, you just have to enter in this command, so I've already copied that, so I'm going to go into my terminal, and I'm just going to paste that in, and then once I run this, it should install the Gridsome CLI. So this will allow us to create our project using Terminal. Okay, so now that's installed, we're going to be able to open up and create our project. So how you do that is you do create Gridsome, create, and then you name the project. So I'm in my desktop right now, so I'm going to do Gridsome, create, and then we're going to say port Portfolio dash and blog. And then I'm just going to hit enter. And you can see it's cloning a repository for GitHub. And then we're going to have the boilerplate for Gridsome. So then we're going to be able to learn how to use Gridsome to create our blog and portfolio. And it's all statically generated. So then the search engines and everything will be able to see our website way easier with all of the content inside of it. Okay, so now that's done, all we have to do is open up that directory. So I'm going to do the CD portfolio dash and blog, and then I'll open it up. I'm like, and then we're going to do code dot, and then I'll open it up in VS Code, which is my editor right now. And then I'm just going to do gridsome develop, and we're going to start our server for gridsome. So we're going to see the boilerplate that we just installed. It's going to take a little bit to set everything up. And while we're waiting, you can see all of our directory structure. So all of the stuff that we're basically going to be editing is going to be inside of this source. If you've ever used a framework similar to Nux.js or any other static site generators that use Vue.js, then you'd probably remember all of these folders and everything that is inside of them. So, to open up our website, all we have to do is go to localhost 8080. That is, if it's not taken up on your computer right now, 
So I'm just gonna go to localhost 8080. I'm gonna exit full screen right now. I'm just gonna open up localhost port 8080. And you can see it opens up the grid some boilerplate. So now we're gonna be editing this in the next lectures to create our blog and portfolio. See ya. Hello everyone, and in this lecture I'll be teaching you all about Gritsum's directory structure, which includes all of the files and folders inside of our project. So the first thing we're going to be learning about is a package.json file, which is inside of the root of your project. I'm just going to open that up, and you can see it has the name of your package, and that is going to be what you used when you ran the Gritsum create, and you can see it's also the name of the folder. And this is a private package, and you can see all of the scripts that we run. So we do, if I just stop my server, you can do npm run, and then you can do build, and that's how you build your project. Develop, and that's what we use to run our project in development, so then we can open it up inside of our browser right here. And finally, you can see the dependencies. And this includes Gridsum, which is what we're using to make our whole project. And it'll also include your plugins or view components that you're going to be using later. So if you're installing them and adding them into your project. The next file that we're going to be learning about is the gridsum.config.js, which is also located in the root of your folder. And so the root is basically just right underneath the folder of our project. So it's the first element inside of it. All of the elements inside of these folders would be secondary elements. So we're going to be learning about the gridsome config.js. You can see inside of here, we enter data about our project inside of here. So we have our site name, and then we have our site URL. And obviously, both of these are examples. You would put in what your site URL and site name are. And then also, you add in your plugin and plugin configuration inside of here. So I'm actually just going to change the site name right now. And I'm going to name it Portfolio Blog. And then we can also just take away our site URL. Or can we comment? Yeah, we can comment inside of this. So now we're going to be learning how to use this inside of later lectures. Now we're going to be using the folder that we're probably going to be working in for most of our time using Gridsome. So that is the source folder right here. So let me open this up. You can see all of these folders in here that we're going to be learning about in this lecture. And then you can see a main.js file. And so this is what we're going to be learning about right now. So I'm just going to open that up. And you can see right here, we have already some code inside of here. And it's basically just setting a default layout. So then we don't have to import it into all of our pages. So we're going to be learning about that later. But so we, we're importing default layout. And then we're importing that from the layouts folder. And then we're just setting the layout as the default layout. Also, you're able to import global CSS and scripts inside of here, as you can see right here. And so I'm just I just want to create a default styling or a CSS file that makes the HTML the width 100 percent height, 100 vertical heights margin zero and padding zero so that I don't have to add that onto every single one of my pages. So I'm going to do that is I'm going to create an assets folder inside of our source. And then I'm just going to create styles.css. And then I have some CSS code that I'm just going to paste in here. And you can see it's just HTML comma body and it's just adding in these stylings so then we don't have to add it inside of all of our layouts. So I'm actually going to add in a background in here and we're just going to set that to black so we're going to be able to see if this is working or not so if i go into our grism page you can see the background is still white well that's because we have to import it inside of main.js so how you do that is you go into here and write import and then you're just going to open up a quote a single quote and then we're going to do so we're going to do source which is this symbol right here and then we're going to do slash and then so the source is this folder right here. And then we want to go into the assets folder, which is right here. And then styles.css. So let's do source slash assets slash styles.css. 
So now I'll be loading in this style set CSS and into every single page. So to make sure that we're able to see the changes, I'm just going to add in a background of, let's say, red. So it'll probably look bad, but yeah. So as you can see, it's loading, it's changing the background of all of these pages to red because these style, this style sheet is being loaded onto every single page. So you could use this to uh, reset the style, the default styling for certain elements, like the unordered list and ordered list. They have a default padding. You could just do padding padding zero, and that'd remove the padding for the unordered and ordered list. Now we're going to be learning about pages inside of Grid. So, so to view all of our pages, we can go into our source folder, and then we can go into the pages directory. As you can see, we already have some pages created for us. So the template is where we're going to be adding in all of our HTML code. And then in the script, we're obviously going to be using JavaScript, Vue.js. And then you can also have a style instead of these view files. And so the routing, it automatically generates routes inside of for your website in, for all of the pages inside of your pages directory. So this index.view page, it will actually, inside of your website, you're going to be able to go to it by just going to, actually I should be using the about.view because index is automatically loaded. As you can see here, it says hello world, and if I go into the index.view, you can see it says hello world with this image above it. So it automatically generates routes, these pages, that is in kebab case or dash case. So basically how that works is if I have this about.view, that translates into site slash about. So it turns it all lowercase. And so if I had like about us.view, that would translate into slash about dash us. So I can go to this page for about by just going to our website right here, slash about. You can see it went to the about page. So now the second thing that we're going to be learning about is layouts, and that's right here. So I can open up our layout, and you can see that we have our default layout dot view, and that's what we're importing so that we can use in every single one of our pages inside of the main.js. So you can see we're importing the layout. So basically, what a layout is is it takes all of the code inside of inside of this layout tag right here. And it just inserts it inside of this slot tag right here. So then we're going to have all of this code right here above and below and outside of this slot. It's going to be loaded in. So then we won't have to add in a header onto every single one of our pages. We can just put it inside of the layout and then have this content loaded inside of the layout. I'll be able to show it to you. So then if I go back to our home right here. You can see that this header right here, it has the home and about, and both of these pages are being loaded into it. So if I change something on this header right here, if I change this from the site name and I put in test, then you can see that the name is test. And if I go to the other page, it's still test because it's loading in this same code. So then if you had to change something, you wouldn't have to repaste in your code onto all of these other pages. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture, and I hope it wasn't too long or boring for you guys. I hope I see you guys in the next video. So everyone, and in this video, I'll be configuring our header, so then we will be able to have all of our links, and it will be imported onto all of our pages. Let's get started. So now I have our project open in Visual Studio Code, and so I'm just going to go into the source folder, and then we can see all of our folders inside of here. And since we want the header, it is going to be loaded onto every single page. We want to put it inside of the layout so then we don't have to copy and paste our code onto all of the different pages. So we're going to go into our layouts folder, and then the default layout, which is loaded for every single page. For every single page, is being placed inside of this slot element right there. So I'm just going to delete all of the header code that's for the default 
and then I'm going to delete all of their styling inside of here. We're going to add our own styling in. So instead of using the header element directly inside of our layout, I'm going to add in a component so then if we create more layouts later on, then we don't have to copy and paste our code into each of them. We can just load in the component. So we're going to go into the components folder, and the component is basically, it allows you to not copy and paste the same code into all of your pages by just importing a component into that page. So I'm going to create a new file, and we're going to call this header.view. So now I'm going to create the template, and then instead of here, we can just create a header tag. Okay, so now that we have our header tag, we're just going to open that up, and then we're going to create an H2 element. And inside of here, I want to put our site name, and it's going to be loaded in from our gridsum.config.js. So inside of here, you can see our module.exports, and then we have our portfolio block, which is set to the value of site name. So we can just call this in using a static query. This is using the GraphQL database. So I'm just going to copy this static query. So I'm going to paste it in here. And see, so basically we're creating a query right here. And inside of our query, we're, we want to go into the metadata. And inside of the metadata, we want to get the site name. And that's what we're going to be using inside of here. So to access the site name inside of here, all we have to do is I can actually just get rid of that, self-close this. And then we can do v-html, and we can set that equal to static dot metadata dot site name. And so to import our component inside of here, so then we can actually see it. All we have to do is create a script tag out of our default layout, and then we're gonna go in here. We're gonna say import header from source components slash header that view. Okay, and then instead of our export default, we want to make a new object called components, and then we're going to put header inside of here. So now we have to actually insert it within our layout. We're just going to do header and self-close that. So now this is loading in our header, which is right here. If I actually just delete all of the code from our index page, actually I can just add an index page. So you can see this is our header right here. So we can actually just add in some more content in here. So I can create a nav, navigation, and we can create a link. So instead of using the A link, the anchor tag, which is what you use in default HTML. In Gridsum, we can use a G link. So, this allows us to handle for all of the different routes that are generated. So, if I wanted to go to the index page, so I could create index or home, probably call it home. And then instead of doing href, you do two equals and just do a slash. If we want to go to the about page, then we would just copy this. And paste that below it. We can do about, and we just have to put an about using the kebab case, which we learned about in the directory structure lecture. So I can delete this eight tag, and then we can also create another one for something we haven't created yet, which is blog. I can just say blog slash blog. You can see now we have this navigation right here. And we have our H2 right here. So now I'm going to quickly do all of the styling for this HTML and then I'll talk about it later. Okay, so now I've added in all of the CSS and you can see the header now. And it looks nice with this font and all the colors. So you can see all of the CSS here. So basically, I just set the header to have a display of flex and I set everything to the flex direction of row. I added a justify content of space between, and then this, so um, this h2 element and this nav element, these are both 
the flex items and they are going to be set as far between each other as I can. I added the width of 12 of 100% minus 12 rem. Then I added a padding of 6 rem so that I can have 6 rem of spacing on each side without an overflow of X. So then you have a horizontal scroll bar. Also, I've added the font size and font weights for each the headings and each of the links. And also, so you can see I'm actually targeting an anchor tag right here. So this G link, it actually transforms it into an A tag with this route right here. So you target it using the CSS with a nav A link. So you can see I made it so then the color is inherent, so it'll use the color of right here of the header element, and that's white. I made the text structure decoration none, and I added some padding so then you can go right next to it and you can still click on it and there's spacing between each of the links. And I changed the font size. Also, you're able to see that I've replaced all of the content on the about.view page. And you can see that this header is being loaded onto every single one of our pages. So if I go to our about page, you can see we still have the header, but our route has changed to slash about and it says about page inside of here. So if I go back to home, you can see it says index page. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use SAS inside of our Gridsome project. Then we're going to be able to add in a global SAS variables that will allow us to access our colors inside of our whole web page. And all we have to do is call in these variables in here that is in the SAS language. So SAS includes variables and it also allows us to use nesting which basically you can target the element and then you can use a class inside of it and that that means that it'll only target this element right here that is inside of the parent element. So you're able to structure your CSS like how you are able to as HTML. So to use SAS we have to do npm install uh, dash de d for dev SAS loader and node SAS. So I'm just going to copy this command. Now we're going to my terminal. I'm going to paste that in. Now it's going to be installing SAS, so then we're going to be able to use it in our project. So let's just set it up so then we're going to have. So I'm going to create our variable SAS file. And so I'm going to hit new folder instead of our assets folder. And then I'm going to hit, I'm going to type in SAS. And so we're going to have all of our SAS code inside of here. And I'm going to create a variables. That SAS. Oh, actually, we're going to be using SCSS, and that's SAS also. It's just that it's you use the syntax of CSS. Okay, so we have that file created, and I'm just going to paste in my variables with all of my colors that I created this color scheme with coolers.co. So I just copied that, and now I paste it into here. So you can see all of our colors that we're going to be using inside of our web page. So now if this is done installing. Yeah, it's done installing. So now we can see if that if it's allowing us to use SAS inside of our files by going into the index page. And I'm just going to go to the bottom. And you can see we have a style tag. And to make it SAS, all we have to do is add in a lang, the language attribute, and we set that equal to SAS. You can see SCSS, SCSS. Then we can just type in some SAS code right here. So if I had a variable variable and let's set this to let's set this to white and then we'll make the color of the links the variable and if I run our server you can see that the color of the links is white because we had a variable which this is using SAS PSU denote a variable using the dollar sign and then you write the name of it. So if I also add I could change this into that home links and then I did A. So we're going to target all the anchor tags within this dot home links class. And you can see that we still have the same output. So now we're going to be making the colors or variables dot sass. Let me just rename this colors dot sass. We're going to be making this global so that we're going to be able to access all these colors 
instead of all of our files without having to import them. So normally, if you wanted to import them into every single file by yourself manually, you do add import, and then we're just going to dot dot slash assets slash sas slash colors dot scss. And I should be able to just get rid of this and then do light blue semicolon. And you can see that it's using the light blue color from our colors. So instead of having to import our SAS file into every single file, one of our, file, our view pages, we can just use it globally by going to the documentation. To use a global preprocessor file, you need to install style-resources-loader. So we're going to do npm i-d, and then we're going to install it. So if I stop our server, and then this error right here is just because the light blue wasn't declared because I had uh, stopped loading it into that SAS file. So let me just remove that. Well, actually, we'll leave it there to see for later. Okay. So while we're waiting for that to install, we're just going to set the font that we're going to be using in our web page, and that's Open Sans. So I'm on the fonts.google.com, and I've picked all of the styles that we're going to be using by hitting remove and add the style. And we're just going to be using 300, 400, and 600, and no italics. So I'm going to hit the embed button, and then I'm just going to do at import. So this is a CSS way to import it. I'm just going to copy this, and then we're going to go into our global CSS file. We're going to paste that in, and then we're just going to set font family to open sans, and then we're going to make that important to overwrite any of the other stylings that were in there. So if I, our server is actually not running right now, so we have to rerun our server. And so we will be able to use that font. You should be able to see the font that's being used now. So now we have to make it so that our global preprocessor file, which is the colors.sas, is able to be used instead of all of our pages. So we should be able to do color and then light blue and access it in this page without having to import the SAS file. But to do that, we have some code right here that we're going to have to paste in for gruesome.config.js. And so I'm just going to copy this code right here. We're going to paste it before the module.exports. So I'm going to go into gruesome.config, and we're going to paste it in before this module.exports. You can see that it's using all of this different code right here. And I'm not going to be using the different version of SAS, which is right here. So I can just remove all of this in front of it because we're not going to be using an underscore globals. We just want it to be loading in any SAS file inside of it. So actually, I can remove all of this. Because we're just using the .scss. And then we also have to paste in this code right here into our module.exports. So I'm going to copy this. And then we're going to do a comma at the bottom of this. And paste it in. So now we can just remove this sass here. Because we're just using this type of sass. And so now I should be able to uncomment this code. And we are importing that SAS file into this into this page, and if I ref uh, we have to run our server. Okay, so our server is running, and you can see that the Open Sans font is being loaded in, and also you can see that the light blue color variable that is inside of our color set SAS is being loaded in from here through this gridsome.config.js. And then pasted inside of here so we can use all of these variables. We're using the light blue variable. So now we're going to be able to use these variables inside of all of our pages in our later tutorials while we're build building our portfolio and blog without having to paste that in. So I hope I see you guys in the next lecture. Hello, everyone, and in this lecture, we're going to be configuring plugins to create our blog so then it will generate a route. For each of the markdown files within our blog folder, which is what we're going to be creating within this lecture. So you can see slash blog slash first markdown posts, and then we have first markdown posts within our blog.
Alright, so first we have to install the plugin so that we can create our blog posts and the routes from the markdown files. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create some documentation. We just have to install a couple of plugins. So we have to install the grid some source file system plugin and transformer remark for the markdown. So to do that, I'm just going to hit this, go cancel our server, and then we do npm i, and then we want to install grid some source file system. And grid some slash source dash file system and we also need to install a grid some slash transformer dash remark okay then we hit enter and I'll install both of those so we can configure this while we're waiting so we can see here that we just need to add in a plugin an object into this plugin and then we can configure it, figure it within here. So first of all, we're going to create a template. And this will be what the blog post markdown will be inserted into. So it will allow us to format it. So we're going to create a new template called blogpost.view. And then inside of here, we can just create a template. Main. And we can just hit hooray. It's a blog post. All right. So this is installed. Now we have to configure it. So launcher about exports instead of our grids in that config. And we can see all of our previous code. And we have our plugins right here. So we're going to open this up, create an object, and we want to copy this. All right, so we're using the source file system plugin, which we installed, and type name blog post, which you can see right here, blog post, path. So one thing we're going to change about this is we're just going to go to the blog. So we're going to create a blog folder inside of the root of our project. So let's create that. All right, and inside of here, we want to name it slash blog and then inside of there we want to put in posts so let's create a post and instead of here we will have our markdown files we'll also create a folder and instead of here we'll have images so then you can put in actually let's name this assets so we're going to have all of our posts markdown files in here and then our images within here. So now we can create a new file. And then let's just name it first markdown post.md. And that's the ending for markdown. And then I'm just going to paste in a some markdown code. So actually I forgot a dash. So in markdown we can add the configuration within these three dashes. So inside of here, I'm adding in a title, an author, and a thumbnail. And we're just setting these to all of these different values so that we can use them within our blog post. So what we can do is, so it's going into blog, post, and then md, the markdown file. And then we can add in the template. So we can just copy that code. And we want to go to a slash blog, and then we want to do title. So it should be going in through all of these, and then it'll make the blog post at slash blog, and then the title. And it will convert this into slash blog slash first dash markdown post. The name of this file doesn't matter. It just takes the title. So now we can do grid some develop. All 
Alright. So we can refresh it and it's working. So now we have to go to first slash blog slash first dash markdown post. Okay, and we can see here it says hooray, it's a blog post. So in the next lecture we're gonna be loading in the data inside of this template from the markdown file. So we're gonna load in the content and the title, author, and the thumbnail. And then we're gonna load in these images. And this array image, if I could just copy this, this is the image that we're gonna be using for the posts. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Hello everyone, in this lecture we're gonna be loading in the content from our markdown files into our website, into our template tag right here. And so you can see that I've added in a date variable onto this markdown file. And so you can see it's this 10, 16, 2004. So actually I can just add that to today's date. So we're gonna do 6-15-2020. All right, so we save that. So we can see the date is now 6-15-2020. And also, I renamed our template tag for our posts into just post. And then you can see that I changed the type name to post and templates, I changed the post to post. So now what we have to do is we have to create a page query using GraphQL. So I actually have this page query copied because it's a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna paste it in there. So this is a page query. Basically what this means is it's going to do a query, a GraphQL query to the GraphQL database that will allow us to access data on this page. So we are naming our query post and we want to have a path that is a string and required. And basically inside of this query post, we want to have a post value which is set to the value of posts, which also has the path. So, and then inside of here, we're grabbing in the ID, the title, the content, and time to read. So we're just picking the post that matches this path inside of the route right here. So we're just grabbing all of this from that post. And inside of our template to access that data, all we have to do First of all, let me actually change this to a layout tag so that it adds in our header. There we go. And let's just add in H1. And we can self close this. And the HTML equals to access the data inside of the page query. We do dollar sign page dot post dot title and then you can see it pulled that in so first markdown post and you can see right here it says first markdown post we can refresh the page and you can see that it still works and so it's just taking the title and turning this into the route so if I wanted to create a new markdown file I can just Go into here and then we can duplicate this. So if I can, let me just copy this. Second markdown post FMD. And then you can just write second. Second. So if we go to that route, we can see that it automatically generated it. And you don't even have to restart your server. It'll automatically pull that in. So now what we want to do is we want to pull in the type that all of this data from the post. So we have our H1 with the title. I just removed that text. So we have the title. Then we want to have the author. So let's do an H3. And then we can just do by. Page.post.author. And so actually, if I save this, you can see that we're going to get an error 
and that is because it doesn't know where the author is from. Um, I don't know why we're not getting an error, but basically it doesn't know what author is, because we aren't pulling that in to our GraphQL query. So inside of here, we can just pull an author, and then it'll show it in there. So you can see that we're just pulling in more variables from our query. So now, let's add in the image. We're going to do gimage, and we can self-close this. Source equals, and we can do a colon to represent that we're going to use the JavaScript variable. So page dot post dot what did I name it coverage thumbnail thumbnail, and then in here we want to pull out the thumbnail um, after the date. Alright, so you can see we pulled in the image, and let's just add in a style right here, with ten rem. Alright, so we have our image, our author, and our title. Now we want to add in the content, which you can see is just right here, and we also have our time to read, which is automatically generated with Markdown. So I can just find the content, we're going to create a div, and inside of here, I can actually self-close this, bhhmo equals page.postsetContent. So you can see it's pulling in all of the content from our markdown file. So if I were to close out the second one, and we actually use markdown, so hello, come up, everyone. You can see it created an H1. So if I inspect this, H1. And it has an ID of the text. So you can see that we're able to pull in all the data from this markdown post. Now we want to use the date. So the date is right there. We want to include that. So we can do date. And instead of here, we can do by the author on date. If you'd like to format your dates so then they don't look like the ugliness that is shown right here, then you are able to add in parentheses instead of here. You can do format. Month, 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 so this just means the month, day, comma, and then the year. So you can see if I refresh this, or if I save this post, and you can see it says June 15, 2020. And you have to make sure inside of your markdown post that you have the year, and you have the month, and then you have the date. Alright, so in the next lecture, we're going to be building a blog role that will display links to all of our posts. So it will display a link to this post and also our second one. If I go to that route, and you can see here is the second post. So we'll be able to go to all these posts and it will automatically update if we have more of these markdown files. So I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Hello everyone, and in this lecture we're going to be building a dynamic blog role that will display all of our blog posts. So how we're going to do that is first of all, let's create a blog page. So inside of our pages, let's just create blog.view. And let's create a template layout. And inside of here, we can just have blog posts. Okay, so we have a blog post in here. We'll just have an unordered list and an LI. And so to pull out all of our blog posts, we are going to use GraphQL again. And I have another static query that we're going to be using. So here's the static query. And actually, I meant to say page query. And so basically, what we're doing is we're going to create a query. 
and it's going to go through all of the posts. And we will be getting the total count. And instead of here, we'll have the edges. And instead of each edge, it's going to be a node. And instead of the node, this is going to be each post. We're going to be getting the ID, the title, author, thumbnail, date, content, and time to read. And we can see that we're formatting the dates still. So we're going to do v-4 equals, and we're going to do posts in page dot all posts dot edges, and we have to add in a v dash bind key equals posts, and you just want to log out posts. So you can see we have a node. So let's just have the v bind key as posts at node.id. And that is equal to right there. That's our ID. So for each of our posts, we can just print out the title. And let's actually rename this to a navigation tag. And we can have each of these a G link with the two equals it would probably make more sense to add this after all of our iterations. And the two is going to be equal to page. No. Post that node that title and we just want to do dot two lowercase. So we're gonna make it all lowercase and we are also gonna add in our blog slash blog slash course. And then we're going to dot split. So we're going to replace the space with nothing. So it's going to split it into an array that is separated by a space within the string. And it's going to join it with nothing. And then we also want to add in a ending slash. So we actually don't want to replace it with nothing, we want to add in a dash. So you can see now we're going to each of our blog posts. And this will dynamically update. So actually I should probably go into our selling. Says create a main tag. And did all of this. Instead of our nav, we want to have a tags which have a display of block. So blog, and you can see here we have first markdown posts. Second markdown post, we can click on these and it will take us to those posts. So you would be able to style all of this so then you could make it say you could have the huge cover image inside of here. So we could add in a G image. For each of these. So then you would be able to click on all of this for, and we can add in the author and all of that. But I'm just going to leave it to you to customize everything, because what we built was the back end. So the front end would be easy to do after this. So you can see we're able to click on all of these posts, and it will take us to those routes. And actually, there is an easy way to add in the path of the posts instead of having to customly do this we can just go inside of our GraphQL query and add in a path into there. 
and then inside of our two for our G link, we can remove all this and just go to post.node.path. And once we go back here, we are able to click on it, and you can see it will just take us to that post. So we don't even have to format the title. It will just automatically do that. So I hope I see you guys in the next lecture. Hello everyone, and in this lecture we're going to be integrating comments into our blog posts via Discus. And Discus is an external service, and you can see its description right here on the documentation. Basically, it allows you to have comments on your blog post, but it does include ads. So if you don't want ads, you would have to upgrade to a paid subscription. So on the documentation, you can see you have to go to discus.com and create an account. And then all you have to do is create a site. So I actually already have a site, so I'm going to create a new one. And I'm just going to set the website name to Portfolio Blog. So category, um, they don't have education, so we are just going to do tech and create site. And we want to just have the basic. So if you scroll all the way down, just go to basic. And we are going to do install manually with universal code. So now we can see all these instructions. And if we go back to the documentation, all we have to do is install Gdiscus. So I'm just going to install that. We have to stop our server and npm install u-discus and we have to import viewdiscus into our main.js so we can go into our main.js and we can just import it in here and then view.use to discus all right so now we can run our server again And we actually, there's an error within the documentation because if you discuss this name for the component doesn't work anymore with the plugin that we've installed. So you actually have to use this right here, which I found within a GitHub pull request. So thanks to Eclectic Coding for that solution. So inside of our post, inside of here, we can, at the end of the page, so let's create a main, and let's put all the content inside of our main tag. And then we can have a discus, and our short name is going to be Portfolio Blog 2. And the identifiers page dot post dot title so if i'm correct we should be able to just save that and you can see that we have zero comments so obviously you can see that you need to add in some styling so we can go inside of our tag right here and style equals with 80 percent and then we can add the margin zero auto so obviously you can make you should be adding in more styling than this but this is just some basic styling so you can see that you can add in comments inside of here so if i wanted to add in a comment i could say great post and then just hit post and you can see i'm logged in already so it allows people to log in from other sites if they've already used discus so then you can see it just posted and it says one comment. If I refresh the page, and you can see that the comment is still there because it's embedding an iframe inside of your site. So if I go to the Discus admin page, so if you go to the site on Discus, um, I should be able to just hit configure and complete setup. 
Smith setup. And you'll be able to moderate comments. It takes a bit for all the comments to show up. But you can see that if people were to go to that post, then they would be able to see all of the comments for that post. And if the page.post.title, so if you change the title of that post, it would actually change the comments. So a better identifier might be if you use the ID of the page. I'm just going to be using the title for right now. So I hope I see you guys in the next lecture. Hello everyone, and in this lecture we're going to be using the Grids and Pages API to create pages that will display all of our products inside of this JSON file. So this JSON file is going to be mimicking a data request to a database or a server that you have. So you can see we have our products, an ID, a name, a price, and that is it. And so we're going to be creating a page for each of these products. So the Pages API, how it works is basically all you have to do is go into our gridsum.server.js. And inside of here, you can see we have a module.exports, and we are passing in the API. API.createPages, and inside of here, this is where we can create all of our pages. And all we have to do to do that is we can run a function called createPage, and this takes an object. Inside of that object, we are going to have a path and the component that we're going to use. So the path is inside of here, and we can specify it, and then we are going to have the component. So what we're going to do is we're going to load in this JSON file and create a product page for each of these products. So to do that, we're just going to do let data equals require, and this is just going to load in the JSON file. So we're going to do dot slash source slash assets slash data dot JSON. And we can do data index products so that's going to get the products array that for each product error function and inside of each of these products all we are going to do is create a product at the path of slash product slash plus product dot id plus and then we have to add an, an ending slash so you can see we have an id value inside of here and the component that we're going to use is we want to create a template and this is going to be product dot view inside of here we're going to create a template we're going to have a layout and I spelled that wrong And inside of here, we're just going to add an object for the product for right now. And right here, we can just copy this and change this to product. So every time you change something inside of the gridsum.server.js, you need to restart your server to see the changes. So I'm going to cancel our server and rerun. And let me just close some of these extra tabs. So our server is building. And now we should be able to go to slash product slash the ID of that product. And you can see it has product because that ID it has generated a route for that. Now if we take that, if we change anything within that ID, you can see it doesn't find it, because that's not a route. So now, what we want to do is we want to pass in data when we're creating the page. So the Create Page API has a the context, which allows us to pass in data to that page. 
so you can see the page context. So all we have to do to pass in data is we can add in another parameter called context. Instead of here, we can set product to that product. So then to access the data, we can just do dollar sign context that product. And I think we have to, yeah, we have to restart our server. So you can see right here, it's showing you how to pass that in. And you're also able to use the GraphQL to load all of this in. So if I, that's done running. So you can see right here, we have our JSON object, which is the product that is getting passed in. So we can deconstruct this. HTML equals context dot product dot is it name or title name one page with three sections h3 context dot product dot price Okay, and I should probably actually change this so that we can add in the dollar sign. I could have just concatenated dollar sign via string inside of there, but so you can see one page website with three sections. And the difference with this between actually creating the, the file-based routing, the dynamic routing, is that this generates everything right when you run your project. So it would generate everything right now, and then it wouldn't use this data.json file ever again, even if somebody viewed this page. The, information is static so it won't change any of that information so if i change something within this data.json and i didn't rebuild our application it would still have the same information in here so you can see if i change the product to a different one if i went to two and we can see it says three page website with three sections per page so this is just mimicking us pulling in this data from an API and then creating pages with each of the products from that API. So this is very useful if you were, let's say you had a blog and you actually wanted to use a, an external CMS such as Contentful, you could get the data from here and create all of your posts from here instead of using Markdown. So this was kind of a long lecture, but I hope I see you guys in the next one.